Hey, Joe, yesterday things were looking pretty good for your side of the ball when, when the list came out and, uh, you know, it's, it seemed pretty promising still, but uh, the news kind of got worse for you today. Uh, so can you just talk a little bit about losing the guys that you have lost so far, what the outlook is and how you're kind of bracing yourself or hoping more guys don't go on your list? Yeah, well, that's the hope. You know, obviously it's not uh, the perfect situation or ideal situation, um, but I do believe we have quality depth. And I know we dealt with this uh, last year. So, I mean, all the guys, you know, we had meetings, uh, just really got off of meetings. Uh, but they're all positive. Um, you know, they're ready to move forward. And, and so are we. Uh, the losses, like I said, they're not they're not ideal. You don't want it to happen, but you, you have to be able to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. Next up, Nate Orrick. Hey, Joe, uh, do you have uh, some feel for, uh, you know, some of the contingency plans like, you know, with Johnson, the third on the on the list, Malik McDowell. Yeah. And, um, can you tell us anything? I, I know Troy Hill's on there, too. You guys were saying he's unlikely to play with ankle. Can you tell us anything about Greg Newsom? Is there any update for him? No, it's still day to day. You know, he's going through the protocol and just kind of see you know, where he's at, if he's symptom free. Um, don't know if he's going to make it, but this is really day to day. Um, all the guys you've mentioned, the other positions, you know, we've had other guys that have played. I think that's one of the benefits uh, for us defensively is a lot of our guys have played throughout the season. So it's really kind of the next man up philosophy. Uh, really don't even really talk about it. You know, it's just like, here's a game plan. And then, you know, whoever's playing, uh, that's whoever's playing. We have enough in there just to uh, take care of certain things if we need to. You uh, have a level of uh, optimism uh, that, that Ronnie Harrison can make it for Saturday? Fingers crossed. <laughs> no, Ronnie was uh, actually practiced at the at the end of last week, and he was moving around. He just didn't feel like – he was healthy enough to play at the level that he felt like he needed to play at. So based on that, I would believe that he'd make it to this game, but uh, we'll get a chance to see here in the next couple of days. Okay. Last thing, if you don't have Greg or Troy, um, who would your nickel be? <sighs> I really don't want to give it away, um, but we have multiple options uh, based on what we want to do defensively. Um, uh, Ronnie has played some of the nickel position um, in some of our packages. Uh, MJ Stewart has played some of the nickel position. And uh, with some of these guys, they understand the techniques enough. So if we just want to move some guys in there and just run specific calls, we can do that as well. And that's really kind of how I'm looking at it. It might be m multiple guys, just really maybe based on what we're running defensively. Thank you, Nate. Scott Patrick, we'll go to you. Hey, Joe, I wanted to follow up on that nickel question. How difficult is that when you play a guy like Renfro with the Raiders? And would you consider trying to match up Denzel with him, even though Denzel doesn't usually play inside? Yeah, it's definitely one of the thoughts. Um, but regardless, because of how he runs routes and how they use them, um, I think you have to put something in defensively to try to handle, you know, multiple things. So even if we had – all the guys up, we would still uh, do some things to try to take them away. And just the Raiders in general, um, they've struggled lately, but the threats of Derek Carr and uh, Josh Jacobs. Yeah, Derek, you know, I was there and we drafted him. Um, but this is a very talented quarterback. You know, he has the arm strength. He has the mobility. Um, you can see he, he can read defenses. You know, they give him the ability to make checks to the line of scrimmage, and you can see him do that. Um, and then Jacobs is just, uh, you know, very similar to me to the backs that we have. This has really good balance and body control, runs behind his pads, right? He shows the power uh, very quick. You know, he's a jump cutter. He can go from A gap to D gap, like right now. And, you know, in their passing game, they like to throw the ball and challenge you vertically. So they, they have the playmakers, uh, you know, and we definitely have to play well, you know, in all phases of, uh, of our game. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Scott, Tony Grossi, you're up. Hey, Joe, when it comes to uh, safety, who is next man up? Is it Moffat or LeCount? 
Um, really, to be honest with you, it might be both of them, <laughs> you know, um, and that's really a decision that we're going to have, to have here over the next day or two. Um, it's something we talked about defensively just a little while ago, uh, but that'll be a decision, you know, to talk to Kevin and AB who's up. But right now we still feel comfortable, um, you know, just as long as Ronnie gets healthy and then having Ronnie and Grant. And then we have other guys like MJ Stewart that has some versatility to play there as well. And in, in general, it, it seems when your regular safeties have been in there, they've really come up and produced mm -hmm. in recent games. Uh, uh, can you just comment on the play of the safeties over the last month, let's say? Yeah, I think they play really well. Uh, just in terms of um, – we always talk about those guys being erasers. You know, they have to race the deep passes. They have to race any runs that break. And uh, we've missed a few times throughout the season, but as you said, the last you know three or four weeks, um, I think you see the the guys' ability to make plays in space, you know, in the run game. I think we've seen um, guys' ability to match up coverage and, and also range. You know, just we've had quite a number of interception with those guys, and that's really why we brought them here. Um, and I think it's starting to show. Thanks. Thank you, Tony. Daryl Ryder is next. Yeah, Joe, if you guys can't practice this week, I know you're hoping to maybe get one in on, on tomorrow, mm -hmm. but if you can't practice this week, considering the amount of guys you got to switch out here to get ready for this game, can how concerned are you that you're not going to get that speed to look at what you have available to you? It's honestly, it's, it's not a perfect situation. It's not something that anybody would want, but that's what we did last year. So it's like you almost feel used to it. Um, we had guys, you know, especially end of the season, Pittsburgh game, the only reps they got was to walk through in the, in the parking lot, you know, the morning of the game and start it for us. So it's kind of like been there. We've done that. We experienced it. So um, it's concerning, but I think we'll be able to handle it. And some of, some of the guys on the practice squad have been here for a while. Does that help you, the fact that you know, some of the pieces that you will have to plug in that they have at least been here with the team. So you're not pulling a guy off the street and having to play him in a key spot. Yes, absolutely. Just because they're familiar with the scheme and all those guys in practice, you know, at times like when the numbers get low, some of those guys on practice squad, they take reps on defense, you know, just to keep guys fresh. So all those guys have experience to understand the system. So I don't, I don't think there'll be a, a drop off from a learning standpoint. Thanks, Daryl. Marla, right now, you're up. Yeah, Joe, I just was wondering, do you have a memory of pre for being in charge in Pittsburgh? Anything that you that stuck with you? Nah, pre, I've been with pre. I was with uh, coach in Minnesota as well. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm very close with him. We're uh, playing buddies. <laughs> we sit next to each other on the bus. Um, but, I, you know, he does a great job because you know, that uh, that opportunity he had, he did a great job because um, he handles all the special teams. So mm -hmm. he's the one coordinator that really deals with the offense and the defensive players. So for him, I think it was just a natural fit. Um, you know, and if he has to do it, you know, well, I should say he'll do it again and uh, he won't have any issues with it. And you talked about the safeties, but I was just wondering what you've seen of Delpit. Seems mm -hmm. like he's kind of coming on strong. Um, is, would you agree? Yeah, it's it's reps. You know, Grant didn't play last year. Usually as you come in as a rookie, you go through and you learn. You know, you learn from the good things you do. You learn from the bad things you do. You get a chance to sit down and look at it, you know, when you come back in the offseason and then really develop a plan on how to get better. But for Grant, it's like that's what he's going through now. So with each game, with each thing he does well, he understands it and each thing he has to correct. If we help him correct, he understands it. So I think you're starting to see him be more consistent and settle down and just, just be himself. Thank you. We'll go to Dan Lobby. Hey, Joe. Um, yeah, unfortunately, a guy that went on the, the COVID list, Tag McKinley, I wanted to ask you about him. Um, how have you seen him play this season? He's so explosive. Uh, he's really helped us just because it gives us versatility uh, with what we're doing up front. It allows us to run some different packages because uh, at times you look at him, if you didn't know his number, you think he might be a safety, you know. Um, but I think he, he has gotten comfortable with the system. Um, I think there's plays out there he wish he could probably have back. Um, but I think he does impact how people 
try to um, how people try to protect us, especially on third down. And, and then, you know, I know he had a bunch of pressures on, on Sunday and, yeah. you know, sacks always kind of get the headlines, but, mm-hmm. you know, how much do you guys value just guys creating pressure and, and, you know, how closely do you track things like pressures? Yeah. Oh, we definitely do. We track it every day in practice. I mean, some of it's unrealistic, but we make them feel good. <laughs> um, but we track pressure because it's, it's important. I mean, the sack numbers, that's what everybody wants, but it's really your ability to affect the quarterback, to get him to move in the pocket or feel uncomfortable and as you mentioned, Tech, you know, he's dynamic in a run game because of his speed, his ability to close. You know, he made a really good play on Lamar. Um, but when you can put him in there and match him up on a tackle or match him up inside on the guard or have the ability to move other people around because of what he can do, it really helps you defensively. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. We'll take two more. Mary Kay Cabot, Nate Ulrich. Uh, yeah, just uh, Joe, just wondering uh, in the wake of all of this, and I know you guys went through this stuff last year too, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys have been hit really hard over the last couple of days. What are you sensing is the mood of your football team? How are these guys handling all this? I really think the guys are handling it fine um, because there's enough guys on the team that went through it last year. So it's just like, okay, let's do it again. That's really the attitude I feel just um, with having the meeting this morning. Uh, You don't sense any panic. Um, You feel like guys are ready to step up. Like, hey, it's my opportunity. It's my chance. Um, but that, that's what I would say to you, just my feel, you know, off of talking to the guys today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Kay. Final one, Nate Ulrich. Hey, Joe, um, you know, a non-COVID question, but I just wanted to review this with you real quick because Miles Garrett had a very interesting few days. Uh, mm-hmm. Friday, he said the focus of the team wasn't where he wanted it to be and was kind of challenging guys to mm-hmm. show up ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. The game he had, and he had that play, um, mm-hmm. you know, with the touchdown and everything involved. What did you think of of Miles saying what he did and backing it up the way he did? Um, I think that's like to me, Miles is our defensive leader, and I think he tries to lead by example. And I think when that doesn't happen, and he feels like he needs to say something to the team or to the defense that he does it. Uh, when you can go out and make a play like that, I think that backs up, you know, your type of leadership and the things that you said to him. And going through the course of a season, it's long. I mean, it's grinding. Guys, you know, get banged up. You know, there's long days. You know, guys don't want to, always want to be here. You know, me too. It gets tough at times. But you just have to fight through the grind and keep your head down. And when things aren't going well, somebody needs to step up whether it's me as, you know, the coordinator, the entire defense. Um, but when it comes from a player, especially a player in caliber of miles, it goes a long way to get those guys right. 